Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and this is the T-Square Router Edge Guide with a twist. Much of the content for Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal is born in one of our two workshops, either here in our main shop, which is filled with commercially made tools, or over at what we call our homemade workshop, which is stocked with homemade solutions. One of those homemade solutions is a set of router edge guides, which are used for cutting rabbits, dados, grooves, all sorts of simple joinery with a handheld router. In fact, we have three different ones that we use from time to time. In the March issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, we'll be showing how to make and use all three. So head over to stumpynubs.com for your free subscription. Or you can watch all three videos here on YouTube once they become available. This is video number two. The first jig was shown in video number one, which is posted a few days ago. You'll find a link to it in the notes below this video. And when the third one is available, that link will also appear in the notes below. So just click on show more to find them. Each of these three videos shows a different homemade edge guide, both how to use it and how to make it. Each guide has its own set of features, its own pros and cons. So watch all three before deciding which one you want to make. Now let's get started with edge guide number two. This one looks very simple, but there's a clever twist to its operation. I'm not sure who originally designed it, but I got the idea from a Canadian woodworker named Sergei Duclos. The T-square has a series of notches in its cross piece, each for a different size router bit. The base of the router is offset, so it will align its bit with one of the notches depending on which side of the plate you run against the fence. You'll see what I mean shortly. First, let's see how to make it. The arm of the square is made from plywood, so it stays nice and flat and straight. And it's about 48 inches long and 3 inches wide. You can make yours any length. I just wanted mine long enough to cross cut a sheet of plywood. The cross piece is about 18 inches long and 2 inches wide. I made mine from hardwood, but plywood would work fine as well. The two are connected together nice and square with glue and brad nails. This guide requires a custom router plate which you can make from any stiff quarter inch thick material. I just made mine from plywood. It's eight inches by seven and a half inches, and you don't center the router on this plate. Your bit must be offset. You can see the location of the bit hole in this drawing. Of course, you'll also have to add some more holes for screws to mount it to your router base. That offset is what makes the whole thing work. You see, if you centered the plate on your router's base, the distance between the edge of the plate and the edge of the bit would change depending on how wide the bit is that you're using. But by offsetting it like this, you can run a different edge of the router plate against the T-square guide depending on which size bit you're using. So label your four sides of your plate with the four common bit sizes, quarter inch, half inch, three quarters, and three eighths, just as you see them in this drawing. Once the plate is attached to your router base and labeled, it's time to use it. Choose one of the four bit sizes, chuck it into the router, clamp your T-square guide to a panel and make your cut with the side of the plate that matches your bit against the fence. The first time you do this, the bit will cut a groove in the cross piece of the guide. I went through all four bit sizes right away. Again, placing the corresponding edge of the base plate against the guide and making a cut. I ended up with two grooves on one side of a cross piece and two on the other. I labeled them with a sharpie so I can keep track for future reference. Now every time I use the guide in the future, I use the grooves on the cross piece to align it. If I want to cut a half inch dado, for example, I align the half inch groove up to the position on my workpiece. I use a half inch bit in my router and I run the edge of my router plate that's labeled half inch against the guide. It's that simple. But here are a couple extra tips. As with any router edge guide, you want to make your cut from left to right so that the spinning bit will pull it towards the guide rather than pushing the router away. That'll make the router much easier to control. Also, I made my jig extra long because I wanted to use it for large panels. And those large panels are almost always plywood. But as you may know, modern plywood is actually thinner than the standard half inch, three quarters, and so on. So I use a set of special router bits that are designed to fit that common undersized plywood. I use them when I created this jig, and I always use them when I use this jig so that the grooves in my cross piece always match those bits. If I want to cut a dado with a regular router bit, I use one of my other edge guides. I'll link to those special router bits in the notes below this video in case you want to dedicate your edge guide to plywood too. 
Of course, there is another option that will allow you to cut any size data with just one standard router bit. That is guide number three, and I'll show it to you in our next video. All three of these videos will be linked in the notes below this video when they become available, or you can find them in the March 2017 issue of Stumpy Dubs Woodworking Journal, which you can check out in the archives at stumpydubs.com, and you can subscribe to future issues for free there too. Happy day doing.